So, hello everyone, and welcome, thank you for coming. I'm Alessandro Garminadi, uh, a kernel engineer at Red Hat. Uh, through my career, I have the possibility to, to take various roles. Probably it's not worth annoying you speaking about my biography. So, but probably it's worth mentioning that I am working as a kernel engineer uh, focusing on the Red Hat Automotive Initiative. In this role of safety, con safety concepts are a key, um, key focus, which is what led me to join the ELISA community. I'm part of the ELISA steering committee and also uh, host a bi-weekly Linux feature working group. Today, I'll be sharing a project that I've been contributing in ELISA that stems from some earlier work in the functional safety from Red Hat. But first, let me introduce my co-presenter, Gabriele Paoloni, that I'm handed over to him. Yeah, uh, it's always myself and <laughs> same guy as before. Um, so for the people that you know, were not present at the previous session, I'm a senior principal engineer at Red Hat, chairman of the governing board of the ELISA project. And uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So um, yeah, so in this session, we'll look at, you know, what is uh, KSNAV, what can it do, why it is needed, and, you know, how does it work? So let's move on since we are very, very, you know, we are very tight. So, so KSNAV is a tool that is able to reverse engineer the kernel binary, binary image to uh, provide uh, a static view of the code and of its interaction. Um, especially it is able to visualize uh, such interaction between subsystem and drivers that are supporting uh, the implementation of uh, an API of the you know, user choice. And also it is able to uh, highlight global and static data accessed by the implementation of, such, of a chosen API. And if needed, is also able to provide a fine grain view of the core tree at the functional level. So in case you need to, you know, really heavily debug uh, a feature for, for any reason. Okay. And, uh, you know, why it is needed? Now, if you look at the uh, documentation that is currently available in the Linux kernel, um, there is not uh, any documentation about uh, you know the interaction between different subsystems like so we are, you you can see like in the kernel documentation you have the description of uh, functionalities of different subsystems you can look at the kernel doc headers to understand the single function behavior however you don't have you know really a view of what are you know the subsystems that are supporting for example uh, the IOCTL C score, to give you an example, right? So, um, with KSNAV, you know, we are able, you know, to, to reverse engineer a specific binary image and, and provide, uh, to provide such a view. And, and now, why, why, why do we need such a view, right? And because, you know, sometimes, you know, when you do, for example, a safety analysis, you need to understand what are, you know, the the main subsystems and the key functionalities that are provided by them in the context of a specific function that you are analyzing. Also, when you write test cases and you want to, you know, to write down a meaningful VMV plan, you may want to exercise more heavily such functionalities that, you know, are more critical for, you know, for, for the end goal. And, uh, Another, another uh, reason could be in the context of uh, a CICD, continuous development, if, the, you know, the kernel is uh, a continuously evolving beast, right? And now, if there is a given patch set, how can I assess, you know, what is the impact of, of such a patch set on, in the context of a specific uh, functionality? Maybe, you know, in a previous version of the kernel, there was a subsystem that was involved 
in, 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 in the implementation of a, of a specific API and in a late, after a certain patch set, such subsystem is gone for some reason, right? And uh, so one option to, to solve this problem is, you know, like, you know, go ahead, read the code, understand the code through all the path, right? And uh, well, uh, yeah, it's a possibility. Uh, good luck. Um, <laughs> So, but you know, can, can we make it easier? So uh, at the end, maybe you, need, you still need to read the code sometime, but maybe if you are able to be driven to the most critical code, uh, it could be, you know, a speed up. Uh, yeah, we can move on. How does it work? So as you know, if you don't know, now you know, the, the, all the source code of the Linux kernel it div is divided into uh, subsystems and drivers and the maintainers, maintainers file specify such division. Now, here on the right, you can see the first three drivers, these are drivers, that you can find uh, you know, in the, in, in, on the top of the maintainer file. And, and basically, you, know, you can see that here, you know, it is clearly specified w what is the path, the source code path that belongs to this driver, this is the mailing list that you need to send patch to, the maintainer, uh, the status, this is supported, okay, and this is also the website. But, um, you know, to some extent, uh, the, the source code is already partitioned in components, and these components are drivers and subsystems, and this is very important because this maintainer's file is able to tell us what is maybe an appropriate granularity to to analyze the, the kernel code. Okay. Um, let's move on. Um, Is it down to you now? Yeah. Ah, yes, sorry. <coughs> Keep it. So, we were saying that how does it work is a more elaborate uh, question to solve. Even though one of the functionality of KSNAV is to provide diagrams that rely or give information about subsystem. So another thing we need to comply before moving on is to define what a uh, um, subsystem is. And as Gabriele were saying, the subsystem is not something that is given in the ar kernel architecture. In, but community is agree that a subsystem is what is maintained by a single per person inside the maintainer's file. So one thing that we do is take this maintainer's file and use it as a source of information on how a subsystem is made. One thing that is important, important to see in this thing is that Mm, subsystem as the um, maintainer's file define them is something that is not very precise and you may end up sometimes to have a uh, subsystem that share a file because this uh, partitioning of the code define uh, subsystem as a, a set of file and you can have that the set of file of two or more subsystems may have an inter uh, intersection that is not null. So you may have some file that belong to more than one subsystem. And sometimes, if you are particularly lucky, you may also find yourself in having a, a subsystem that is completely nested into another. Uh, sorry. So in this picture here, you can see the subsystem as uh, they appear in the maintainer file. You can see nodes in this graph and also uh, arcs. Nodes uh, correspond to subsystem. Ideally, you will have a constellation of subsystem and no arcs. Unfortunately, this is not true and the arc you see are, mm, are, there is an arc between two nodes when you have an intersection, non-null intersection between two subsystems. A thing that is particularly interesting to see is the Unix 
philosophy here because you can see clearly that the everything is a file unix philosophy is well um, is well represented here by the dfs virtual file system subsystem which is the center of a, a fairly mm, big uh, constellation of uh, nodes so time to see uh, how key, uh, key as nav work, and we will do this by examining its architecture, as shown here. The picture uh, here shown the architecture of the, the KS nav and some of these software in, uh, in um, dependencies. The first thing you see is the kernel bin db that in the uh, them in the diagram is represented as collector. There is the part of KS nav that is uh, responsible to fetch information from um, a kernel image. It uses some dependencies to do this. For example, it uses radar2 to, to, to fetch the cross-references in the binary, and then use the uh, binutils to, to fetch mm, the bug information. Uh, the next thing that is in the diagram is the nav component. The nav component, oh, I forget a thing. The collector is also responsible of uh, organizing this information. This information are organized, for, as for now, inside a relational database. And uh, moving on, the nav component is the component that is responsible for using the database information to create diagrams. Then you have also a um, front-end UX, that is uh, nav web, which is another component that wraps the nav component and provides an interface, a web interface to interact with diagram produced. Sorry. Now, by now, you, um, you may be wondering why analyze the binary when we have the source code right there. It's a fair question, and I don't take it lightly. Uh, the thing is that analyzing the kernel source code has a lot of challenges. First, the kernel source code is packed with C macros that depends on build time configuration. Then you have a build process that controlled by make file, which can modify or include different files. Uh, compilers adds also other uh, problem in this because they can change the, uh, the code. And do not forget that the kernel is not made by only C, but there is also a fair part that is made in assembly, which control the interrupt and the boot sequence mostly. Um, this is some. This is uh, the pro, the, the cons of uh, having an analysis based on uh, the source code. On the other end, you have the binary image that is mostly the same that you see when you use um, what you see, what you get editor because binary is exactly what it was going to, to, to run. So you wouldn't, wouldn't have any uh, surprise or anything that is not as expected, for example, because uh, compiler optimization or because you didn't expect the, the code that goes in that way. Please note that this is particularly inter interesting in the safety concept because on effectively, what we are interesting is what we are going to run, not what the programmers intend to run. So if the compilers make change and the actual, the actual code that run is different, you may have problem when you, uh, when you talk about the, the safety. That's my part. So and uh, so and here we are showing for ex an example of how it can support a safety analysis. 
you can see here we are analyzing uh, the IOCTL syscall. And because, as I said, the KSNAV is able to provide you a static, view, a static view in the context of a specific API or under analysis. So here, the API under analysis is IOCTL. It belongs to the file system, VFS, and infrastructure subsystem. And here, you can see that you, we have all the interaction with the other subsystem. And here, you can see basically what, what are the function calls and this is the source code that where this call is made. Okay, so even if KSNAV work at the binary level, using the debug information is able, you know, to point you to the right of the source code. And here we have, you know, the different subsystem. Indirect here, it is where basically there is a, an indirect call that for a Yoctel, uh, for example, usually it goes down to the uh, unlocked IOCTL callback that hooks into the specific driver that, you know, was uh, specified by the um, file descriptor. So now, based from this view, you know, you are able indeed to understand what are the subsystems involved in this context, uh, what are the function calls, and therefore maybe your analysis could be uh, faster, you know, if you, if you either, I mean, if you want to understand the code or if you're doing a safety analysis and understand what are the most critical functionalities, you know, in the context of the requirement that is allocated to your IOCT. Okay. Um, next one. Also, KSNAV is able to highlight the global data static and global data here, the orange circles, that are, is used by a target function, that is this one. And basically, basically this diagram, it says, hey, this function is touching this global data, static and global data, but, and we have other functions here that are also accessing this data. And this is indeed, you know, uh, very important because it is able to highlight what are the uh, software resources that usually are identified with, you know, uh, static and global data, and also what are the, you know, the other uh, neighbors, if you like, that can either interfere or that are using the same resources. And this is also important, you know, to, you know, to, to drive your VMV campaign and also to complete, uh, you know, your, your safety um, analysis. Um, next slide. This is now the demo. Uh, demo time. Uh, we are already out of time, but uh, I hope nobody is going to take your sandwiches. No audio. Does it show up the No. Which is even better. Oh, okay. But we have no audio. Um. Okay. I try to comment it. So here we have uh, it is running. Is it running? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Okay. It is. So we have the command line for the KS nav. Here there is uh, um, the first kind of uh, graph that we can produce. It is a function trace graph. You may see uh, various color. Red color means that uh, there you reached uh, a point that is not expanded by policy. And the orange one um, it some symbols that are for various reasons uh, denied to, to expand. We are now we will see another type of diagram. This diagram here is for uh, subsystems. So you 
you have specified a target function which is the USFCD device init and this is the graph here you can see the home, uh, the home um, for the target function which is the universal file storage and the, all the subsystems that are attached uh, running that specific uh, function the rest is one of the subsystems as specified in the maintainer's file in any case and uh, we have four type of diagrams now we see another type of diagram that is the one that Gabriele used just before this diagram here is meant to provide the interface from a subsystem to another where on each arc is specified the transition from one subsystem to another and lastly there is the last um, the last diagram that we see all, uh, already too there is the global data sharing uh, um, diagram this one here here you specify the function where you start and you see the orange ellipses that are the global data and the green uh, function that are function that use the same uh, global data and this terminate the video last thing we have here if my to the, to the top. yeah I would gladly if only I could Thank you for your patience. You okay. so we finally can go to the next slide that are the new uh, feature that I plan to add to this tool this tool here you can see the um, QR code that is the uh, git repository in the Elisa namespace if you want to contribute it and uh, the next feature I want to build upon this is the capacity of the, um, the tool to operate with git repository basically you now need to provide it a built image of the kernel in the next version when it will be uh, available you will have to provide just a configuration and a git and a kernel tree it would build its kernel and analyze that and the capacity the capacity of automate the build this because in this way you can um, you can check two, ver two different versions of the kernel and highlight the difference between a version and another this is particularly important when you want to evaluate the impact that a patch set will have on a new kernel and another thing that needs to be uh, added is the capacity of res resolve the indirect code now the indirect calls are a little bit tricky normally it is nothing it is not a thing that you can resolve in static analysis but the kernel is somehow different because you have all the code in the repository you cannot have an indirect call to a third party code or at least it is out of the scope of this investigation so in this particular case you may you may be able to take an indirect call and give a, um, um, a set of possibility of which this di indirect call can be resolved you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't have a point you wouldn't have a particular uh, fun function there 
you will have a set you can call from here you can go there there and there but it is something that is however useful then another thing that I want to build uh, up on this is to improve the uh, current web interface and have the possibility of integrate the code browsing if you ever used the bootlin uh, kernel uh, kernel browse something like that but plus the cross references thing I would like to add also the diagram on the part that could be useful for example when you see the call tree uh, thing and uh, last but not least the collector uh, the co in the current db thing I would like to add a um, database uh, a graph database in the set as, so, as told in during the, in the presentation for now we have just um, a relational database the objective uh, is to take all this data, cross-references, uh, names, symbols, etc., and put into a relation, into a graph database that would enable third-party uh, investigation over this data. So, I think we reached the point. If you want to contribute, there is the link, and there is everything I have for this session. If any question, I would be glad to answer that. I, I think everyone can hear me though. I think that's uh, it, it's recorded. Yeah. Uh, do you think that maintainers is a reliable source of information? Because that fi there are many drivers, many things that are not in that in that file. They are not documented there. Is is it enough what you get from the maintainer file? Well, if you if you are talking about the um, BSP driver that came from a different uh, three. In this moment, I don't. Uh, uh, it doesn't have this feature because the maintainer file usually DSP doesn't um, update the maintainer file. However, if by chance the vendor is so kind to provide a maintainer file update with its own bits, it is able to grasp. To grasp uh, I, I think the question is with respect to the the tree to the mainline tree yeah uh, you're asking if yeah, exactly, all sorry. the drivers today are yeah. mapped yeah in the, you the show an example file. with the three drivers right right at the beginning but most of the drivers are not most of, many of them are not documented there so just a few are no. documented in the, uh, in, the, in the maintainers file uh, pretty much all of them are, are not not all not there are many which are still not documented there drivers there are many that are that are not uh, not in the maintainers file there are many yeah, for sure. You sure? Yeah, definitely, 100%. That not, they are not in the maintainer file. I can show you some now. Okay. Okay, yeah. This is something yeah. we need to investigate. Yeah, I guess there are maybe all drivers, but they are not all documented. Okay. The assumption was that the, ma the maintainer file has every... Because in the end, you have the rest in the maintainer that there is a big... Yeah. yeah, it always falls back to something. So, formally speaking, they are all covered because there is this, the rest that is fall back for everything else. So, mm -hmm. in this case, there are some drivers, I didn't know this, that some drivers were there. In any case, I will repeat my investigation and take mm, more attention on this. But in any case, in in the case in, in, the, in the scenario where a file is not uh, a driver does uh, have not a specific uh, subsystem it will go in the rest and you have this that is probably not ideal but, uh, but, but if you can come up with an example like please send it on I mean it would be really interesting I think we are out of time for a And something which is not a question, maybe a suggestion, because I'm doing a lot of kernel crash analysis, uh, which are based on backtraces. It would be nice if you have a feature where you can specify a call tree, uh, 
the, the exact uh, backtrace during a crash and you are able to see all the data accessed by the functions as you show in your example but for a specific call chain because the crash is usually caused by something in the current call chain which wasn't right it may not be exactly in the current function but it is very often uh, located in the backtrace that would visually simplify the process a lot okay You are so kind to submit uh, an issue for me. I take a, no, a mental note, but I'm not sure to bring it at home. In any case, just a suggestion. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Any other? So, thank you for your attention.